In this video, we'll be taking a look at a couple of free SketchUp alternatives with a view towards making drawings that you can use to create things in the shop. The two ones I chose are FreeCAD and Blender, which are both open source, which should help protect you from what has happened with SketchUp as they've transitioned to a more browser-based, subscription-based program, which uh, does make it a lot more expensive to get all the features. We'll be going over the strengths and weaknesses of each of them and making a small board and then dimensioning it just to show you like the feel of each of them. Let's start with SketchUp. I'll be timing each of them to give you a feel for how long this kind of thing takes in each of them. With SketchUp, we first need to create a rectangle. The blue tells us we're on the right plane. Then we can type in our dimensions, 24 by 12. Next, we'll pad it up, or it's called push-pull in SketchUp, three quarters of an inch. To get our dimensions, we need to click this tool up here, click a vertex, click another one, make sure your color's right when you're doing them. You want these on the XY plane, and then this one will need to be on the Z. I like lining them up. Next, we'll need to switch to parallel projection. So this will hide them when we're not looking at them. Get our standard view. Con command one gets you this view. Take our screenshot. And then command three will get us our front view. And we can take our next screenshot. All of this was done in under a minute, which is pretty impressive. The downside is, is you have to organize those screenshots in order to print them off. The next one we'll do is FreeCAD. FreeCAD can be a little strange at times or a little quirky, but it is super powerful and super clean. Um, you know, let's uh, dive into making our part here and I will show you how it works. So start the timer. All right, we've got a new document. Um, we, let's get over the start workbench and get into the part design workbench, which is where I do most of my work. Uh, create body, create sketch. Now we choose the XY plane. This was all done with the colors in SketchUp. So we've got ourselves a rectangle. Now let's dimension it. 24 inches by 12. As you can see, this is in metric, but it's working just fine. Uh, FreeCAD is very powerful this way. I just constrained it to the origin there. Now we want to pad it and we want to do three quarters of an inch. There we go. The next thing we need to do is create a drawing. So let's go over to the tech draw workbench, uh, create a new drawing, hit the body. We need to get a view of it we want. So we'll take the front side and then we will hit uh, the multiple, so the multi view, uh, combo view uh, feature. So we'll change the scale on our page to 0.1 to make them the right size. And then we will start dimensioning. We can zoom in here, grab a side, put a dimension on it. Grab a side, put a dimension on it. And then finally, uh, we need this dimension. So actually we'll put one on each side here. All right, and that's it. Um, there is a little bit of moving around that you didn't have in SketchUp. But, all, but you also get a really great uh, printable document at the end rather than screenshots that you need to print through like preview or some other PDF reader. The final one we'll look at is Blender. Now this is VFX software, but through add-ons and a bit of uh, grit, we can make actually a pretty decent CAD program out of it. There is an amazing Maker Tales series on how to use Blender for precision modeling in 3D printing. Um, we'll be using some of those techniques learned from that, and I'll include a card here for, for, how, for that series. Let's get into uh, making a model here. I'll reset the timer and we'll, uh, we'll get to modeling. So the first thing you need to do is grab that cube, click the button here, and then we've got the dimensions. So we can type in uh, 24 inches, 12 inches, and then three quarters of an inch. All right, 
fairly similar to, to FreeCAD in that it's quite nice multi-dimensional thing. So we have to tab into edit mode to get our dimensions, press two to get ourselves an edge selection. Then we can select all the edges we want. And now we go to measure it arc and click aligned. And now we show our dimensions and this is dimensioned. Now we click our Z and then it should be our X, our X, yes. And we can screenshot both of those and we're done. Blender automatically puts it in orthographic mode or parallel projection, which is super helpful for getting accurate, uh, scalable drawings that you can work from. Uh, you can also get more detailed with Blender in that you can start rendering uh, out like with lines on them and stuff, which makes really clean drawings. Uh, not quite as nice as FreeCADs in my opinion, but much better than what you're getting with the free version of SketchUp. Now to add a bit of complexity, we're going to add a rabbit three quarters by one quarter to each of our planks and then try and get the measurements back on it. You'll be able to see through this how they respond to changes in the geometry with their measurement systems and how robust or not robust they are. We'll start again with SketchUp. Now in order to get a rabbit in SketchUp, you need to start with a construction line. You get those by get, grabbing the tape measure, selecting an edge, and then coming in on the axis you want, uh, in this case green, which is Y, and then typing the amount you want it to be. So three quarters of an inch. Next, you make a real line right over top of the, uh, the uh, construction line, and then that will divide up the faces. Now we can extrude this down or um, push pull this down uh, one quarter of an inch. There we go, we're done. And most of our measurements are still good. We'll need to add one over here to match that one. And then um, one on this side for this distance. So we can take our screenshot again. It's a little, a little rough looking, but some of that is due to Mac OS and some of that is due to my settings on SketchUp. Now a minute 10 to change and update the measurements and get our three views or our two views printed. Not too bad. Now for FreeCAD. In order to create uh, a Raven FreeCAD, we need to um, get back to our original model and then create a new sketch on one of the faces. So we'll go back to part design uh, and create a sketch on that face. We can constrain it to this corner over here, make sure the height is three quarters of an inch. And then the final thing we need to do is make this face available to constrain to. So use the external geometry tool there. Now um, we grab this little guy and this one and press O to constrain that point to that face. Now we can create a pocket. Let's do three quarters of an inch or one quarter of an inch again. There we go. And now we have to return to our drawing. So let's get back to it. And as you can see, some of our measurements got completely destroyed by the geometry changes, which is a not uncommon problem in FreeCAD. Uh, they are working on it. And there is a branch called Link Stage 3 that has it mostly solved, but it's not exactly the most stable as of yet. So I work with this one. And then one of the nice things with FreeCAD is you can do multiple uh, what measurements at once if you select uh, the right thing. So there we go, dimensioned a uh, minute and 30. So slightly slower than SketchUp, uh, probably mostly due to the loss of some of the edges um, because the edges got renamed by FreeCAD um, because it doesn't exactly handle the edges in the most intelligent way as of yet. And finally, we'll return to Blender. Blender is the quirkiest to start doing this kind of stuff on, uh, partially because it is trying to make sure you have good geometry for really flexible modeling, which is important in the 3D industry. Um, 
but it's easier to show and to tell you about how this works. So let's go. So the first thing we need to do is we're already in edit mode, so tab into edit mode, and then get our loop tool. This we can, it allows you to cut, make a cut across the surface. Pull it all the way to the one side. Now we select CAD transforms, press G, and now we can move this along. If you press Y, it constrains it to the Y axis, and then we can type in the number we want. We want three quarters of an, oh, wait, wait, wait. We want, let's just go 0.75 inch. There we go. Three quarters works too. It's just, I typed it wrong and I don't have time to figure it out. Now what you want is the extrude manifold tool and to select three, press three, which will allow you to select faces and you just push it down slightly. So with that done, we go back to CAD transforms, grab this face and pull it up tight to the edge. Now we grab it once more and we pull it down 0.25 inches and we're done. So let's see how our measurements fared. Uh, this one looks like it's tilted. So we have to go into our object here. Uh, let's select it, uh, delete it. We'll have to remake that one. The rest look good. So in order to remake that one, we'll need to be able to select vertices now. So because it goes across one and the edge selection won't let you do this. So we can, we can create a measurement there and then we need them for this. So we can actually do edge selection again. Get that one and we'll get that one. So let's take a look at our different views and see what they give us. This one, the top view, sure, it looks fine. Perhaps not the most well labeled. And this one looks bad. So what we need to do is now make our um, like the, the gizmos visible. We can pull these around and get our measurements looking good. All right, this is actually, this is actually good enough. It has all our measurements on there. Now, having it in meters is kind of strange, but like you can change what unit you have measure it doing its work in. I haven't modified that since I installed it again. Um, but it's totally changeable by you and available for your, you to change it. So it's good. I hope this video has been at least somewhat helpful in showing you how the basics of how these pieces of software think and behave. In future videos, we'll go into more complicated objects and uh, explore them deeper, but I'm gonna start separating them out and making uh, videos for whichever one you're interested in. I will still make a comparison video, but it will be abridged rather than showing you the full workflow for each of them. Thank you for watching. I hope you got some value out of this.